So here's what I want to teach you. That the biggest questions that you can ask yourself are these. First of all, based on my species type, my genome, what foods do I require? And what foods are toxic to me? What foods do I require? And what foods are toxic to me? Here's the foods you require. You ready? It's really simple. Meat. What kind of meat? Why are all these studies saying red meat's bad for you? They're totally bogus. None of them are valid. Why? Because all the red meat that they're feeding people is grain-fed, full of omega-6, has no omega-3 in it. It's not meat at all. It's an industrial product. But if you actually look at the people who eat the most meat in the world, probably the aboriginals of Australia and, the, and the Inuit. Yes? So what do the aboriginals eat? They eat a kangaroo for breakfast, kangaroo for lunch, kangaroo for dinner, and a joey for dessert. <laughs> And what do we know of when we study these people? We eat the, they have the highest red meat consumption based on percentage of their diet of anyone in the world. And guess what we find out? We find out they have some of the lowest inflammatory rates. They have the longest bleeding times or the thinnest blood, which means that's good. They have virtually no atherosclerosis or, or any of the pro-inflammatory issues. But they eat the most red meat. And everyone's telling you to stay away from red meat. Why? Because it's pro-inflammatory because it's full of what? Arachidonic acid, which is what? a very highly essential fatty acid, which makes up a huge portion of your brain. So there's absolutely no danger in arachidonic acid at all, unless what? You have no omega-3s in your diet. So guess what a high grain, low fat diet does to your omega-6, omega-3 fatty acid ratio? What does it do? It destroys it because grains are full of what? Omega-6 fatty acids and they're devoid of omega-3. Any of that red meat that you're eating has, has no omega-3 fatty acids in it. So the, 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 all this ridiculous research on heart disease and cholesterol, all this stuff, it's totally bogus. It's completely bogus. Even in the peer-reviewed literature, they're screaming, this is bogus. Because the reality is, is that arachidonic acid and red meat don't make you sick. Our ancestors ate it by the ton. But if you eat a bunch of, <laughs> of grain-fed, fatty meat and sit around on the couch and stress out, yeah, might not work out for you. But let's not blame the red meat. And by the way, what happens to a high-carb diet when you eat it? How much blood sugar can you store? How much sugar can you store? Enough for one day. So what happens when you fill all your cells with glucose? What happens to all that extra sugar you're eating? It gets turned into fats. Palmitic acid, C16, palmitic acid. C16 means 16 carbons. And you store it, usually around your waist, from here to here, yes or yes. Of course it does. And you know what else happens? You get insulin resistant, you're gonna produce more stress hormones. Stress hormones are gonna change your cholesterol profile. They're gonna increase your cravings for fat and sugar. They're gonna decrease your sex hormone binding globule, meaning you're gonna have more free sex hormones travel around, like estrogen, which is gonna increase your chances of cancer. They're gonna increase the stress hormones, increase your platelet factors. They're gonna downregulate your immune system. They're gonna increase chronic inflammation. It's a nightmare. You couldn't design a better diet to kill people than a high carb, low fat diet. So there are some real, real myths about eating. One of them is that red meat's bad. But if I had to choose between eating, you know, grain-fed, you know, feedlot, you know, gross red meat and something else, I'd pick the something else every time because it's disgusting. Well, not every time, but a lot of the time. But if you can actually get real meat, and by the way, the more of you that demand real meat, what will happen? Ten years ago, you couldn't get real meat, could you? Now you can get it almost everywhere. You know, you can get the grass-fed meat, can't you? By the way, lamb is great because they don't grain feed it. So if you go to a restaurant, you're just having that, you know, you got to hunger on for some red meat, order the lamb. Because it'll, almost all the fish you're going to get is going to be farm-fed, and that freaks me out. Not because it's unhealthy, because it is, but it's unhealthy for the oceans and for the wild salmon stocks. My dad's a fisher's biologist. Um, I love salmon. <laughs> Not to eat, I just love salmon, so. Um, I got to back up. Okay, so now I just want to talk quickly about, by the way, what kind of exercise patterns do you need? I just want to go over it really quickly. How do you know what kind of exercise you need? What did your ancestors do? You know, I teach this all over the world called Innate Fitness. I've written a book on the topic. And everywhere I was traveling around the world and all over, everyone kept coming up to me and saying, you should do CrossFit. You should do CrossFit. You'd love CrossFit. Do you do CrossFit? And I was like, what the hell is CrossFit? Shut up. You know? <laughs> It's not about me, I don't want to hear about it. So, you know, and I, and I can't, so eventually I ended, up, I ended up here. What does CrossFit do? What's the premise of CrossFit? The premise of CrossFit is to feed your genes, and, and, and to stimulate your genes in a way that's genetically compatible. CrossFit is really based on the, the reason I like it, and the reason I'm here, the reason I'm speaking here and I'm supporting the team, is because it just absolutely makes sense because the movement patterns that they're talking about are the same movement they're trying to mimic what our ancestors did because that's what our genes need to do what? 
And the same things that are going to make you good and fit are the same things that are going to protect you from cancer and heart disease and obesity and diabetes and infertility and impotence and all the stuff you don't want. And the same things that are going to make you perform well are going to be the same things that give you all the things in life that you want. And do you think that how you exercise affects your emotional state and your moods? Do you think how you exercise affects your food cravings? Does how you eat affect your moods? Does how you eat affect whether or not you have energy to exercise or, the, or, or even the desire to exercise? These things all work in a holistic way. The, the one thing that I would say is that you, I don't care how fit you get, it doesn't matter if you're not eating and thinking properly. Who cares how fit you are if you don't love yourself? Do you know what I mean? Does it really matter? And are you at the gym because you're trying to make yourself look like somebody else so you can feel better about yourself? Or are you at the gym because you want to do the right thing to stimulate your genes so you can have a great life? I mean, we've got to put all, all these things together. The other wonderful thing I love about CrossFit is it's a community. They've really done a good job on the tribe thing. I mean, I'm trying to be the leader of the tribe. Dad won't let me and Reed won't anyway. It's a really good tribe. I just you know, can't believe I'm not the leader. Keep <laughs> they won't let me. I can't do a push-up. That's probably why. But um, it's, it's just not a phenomenal idea. But, the, but you know, here's the one thing I'm going to say. I'm going to say that the one thing I would add to CrossFit is agility. Changing direction very quickly. It's the one. Th it's the one thing. The movement patterns are phenomenal. It's the best in the world. It's the best that's out there. If I was going to recommend any exercise, it's CrossFit, and I would say plus agility. The ability to change direction very quickly, and then do so, and then have to regain your balance, is something that was phenomenally important to our ancestors. And listen to me now. Side to side movement stimulates your brain very differently and more powerfully than movements in this plane of movement. If you're doing everything in this plane, everything in this plane, then what happens is your brain does not get stimulated the same way as if you change that plane and go from side to side and have to change direction. And it's just simple to do. You can do it on your own, you don't need to do it. Here, but I'm just saying, I'll, I'll just let you know that based on the research, it's very clear that to build your brain and to stimulate properly, agility is really important. And the other thing CrossFit does is they really form that community and they make you feel welcome when you show up. I mean, they humiliate you when you get here because, well, they don't humiliate you, but, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, it's funny because I'm doing this talk and I'm thinking to myself, I think I was laying here about three days ago crying, you know what I mean, after some, some stupid thing they put me through. But you know what? You always feel better after you've done it. And I always think every morning I wake up and I have my gratitude exercise and then I come and I eat my, have my humility exercise at CrossFit. But it's, but, you know, it's kind of neat to be in a group of people you know, of all different kind of levels that are so encouraging to one another. It's kind of a neat, it's a good tribe, isn't it? It's not that way when you go to the gym. Everyone's got their headset on and they're, you know, doing the bicep thing, looking in the mirror, and they got the Popeye pants on and they're drinking their shake and I'm out. Anyway, so 